Good evening. My name is Marietje Schaka. I'm a member of the European Parliament for D66 political party. We are a pro-European party and we also believe in EU enlargement. And both subjects are not necessarily popular either in Europe or in Turkey. So in that sense, we may be closer to each other than we sometimes think. But on a more serious note, EU enlargement has proven to lead to substantial improvement in the lives of people, their freedoms, the democratic levels and economic opportunities. And in return, the EU has reaped the economic benefits of scale and its competitiveness in the world. Stability has been a benefit to all, and even though we may have gotten used to security and freedoms, the history of Europe reminds us that this is unique. It's understandable, especially in times of crisis, political leaders should act more responsibly in sustaining the EU's strengths, instead of falling to the temptations of populism and nationalism. These may seem attractive in the short term, but have a high price in the end. The discussion about the EU and Turkey is victim of nationalist short-term thinking, which happens on each side. There always seems to be an election on the horizon, which tempts politicians to speak to domestic audiences, and there's hardly a more popular subject than bashing the other. Turkey is experiencing tremendous times, and the government acts more self-confident than ever. Economically, the sky seems to be the limit. It leads to strong ambitions for regional leadership, especially in a changing and uncertain neighborhood. However, neither economic growth nor the dynamics in the region provide certainties. Whether or not Turkey can be a useful example for other countries in North Africa and the Middle East remains to be seen. Many have suggested it could be an example. It may well be mostly a much welcomed point on the horizon or an aspiration. An example based on the aspiration of economic success that many people feel. And even though human rights are crucial, it was the despair of income equality and a lack of opportunities after all that set off the uprisings in most of North African and Middle Eastern countries and not necessarily uh, just human rights. Turkey and the EU need each other to work together in our shared challenging neighborhood. But the formal relations between Turkey and the EU are around domestic affairs, the Copenhagen criteria. These are the same criteria which each candidate member state of the EU needs to meet. For Turkey to meet the Copenhagen criteria, a lot of work lies ahead. While some important reforms have been made, a long list remains. Amidst a highly polarized political landscape, it will be a challenge to ensure the constitutional reform process is broadly supported in society. As a result of the high threshold for new political parties, many voices are not represented on the political stage. And even more troubling, more and more voices in Turkey are silenced. As a result of the arrests of many journalists and restrictions on internet and press freedom, a chilling effect hampers an open debate that would suit a really confident Turkey. Instead, there is a lack of trust in institutions and questions about the separation of powers. Recently, a newspaper published a photo of a woman murdered by her husband. Instead of sparking a debate about the dismal state of women's rights and the horrific practice of honor-related violence and murder, the newspaper's ethics were questioned. Hardly a country uh, that we might want in the EU, some might say. But EU accession and the EU accession process are still the most realistic avenues to ensure that Turkey makes the reforms that are needed to make a real democratic country, which goes much deeper than just one man, one vote. Turkey's economic potential can and should benefit the EU, but it will also uh, only prove sustainable if economic developments go uh, hand in hand with enhancing people's rights and freedoms. Thank you.